This happened to me when I was 13 years old. I'm a girl. Sometime around Christmas, my mom, dad, and little sister went out shopping, but I had stayed home. I knew that they would be gone for a few hours, but I didn't mind since I loved having the house all to myself. My sister's shoes were at the front door instead of the garage, so she went through there instead, and I closed the door behind her. I feel that it's important to mention that a week prior, a boy in the grade above me came up to me during the school pickup and started talking to me. I was never a very social person, but this boy had tried to talk to me many times before. I always just nodded and gave autopilot responses. He was asking for my number, but I politely said no. After a bit of pushing, he finally gave up and left. I was then picked up a few minutes later. Now was the first day of Christmas break. Like I said before, my parents and sister went out shopping and they wouldn't be back for a few hours. I unplugged the living room security camera so I could do a bunch of weird shit without the chance of my parents looking in on me. Right around an hour later when it was dark, I closed all the blinds and I made myself some noodles and watched a movie while eating. After I finished my dinner, I was watching the movie. I paused to get a cookie when I had heard some noise on the outside of my house. It sounded like footsteps. I held my breath to listen closely, making sure it was just the house making noises. But no, it definitely sounded like footsteps in the backyard. I turned off the TV, grabbing a knife from the kitchen counter, and I then ran to go lock myself in the bathroom. I heard a pounding on the window, then silence. Even the footsteps were gone. A few seconds later, I heard two voices from outside the house, one male and one female, and then once again, I heard silence for about five minutes straight. I went out of the bathroom and quietly inched closer to the phone to go call the cops. Then I heard the landline ring. I was about five feet away from the phone. The noise startled me, and I had dropped the knife with a clatter, followed by a violent pounding on the backyard door. I picked up the knife and then ducked into the small storage closet under the stairs. There was a reason that I mentioned earlier that my sister left through the front door instead of the garage and that I closed it behind her. Two pairs of footsteps ran around to the front and then I heard the small beep of the alarm system letting me know that a door leading to the outside had been opened. How could I have been so stupid as to not lock the front door when she left? I controlled my breathing to be as silent as possible and I readied the knife. I heard the doors being slammed, and an oddly familiar voice then called out. Where the fuck are you, you little bitch? I know you're here. I think it might have been the boy. As expected, the closet door swung open, and there was a girl outside. Out of instinct, I took the knife and then sliced her with it. She started to shriek, and blood dripped on the floor as she slapped my face very hard. So hard that I actually fell down. The woman ran out of the house and then slammed the front door shut behind her. It took a minute of silence to register that it was now over. I got up and locked the front door, and I quickly started to clean the blood off the floor with soap and water. I didn't get to the phone in time to call the cops, but these people were long gone now so there was really no point. Just as I finished cleaning, I realized with a chill going down my spine that I never even heard the boy leave. I then quietly checked everywhere in the house, knife in hand, turning all the lights as I checked the upstairs and downstairs, as well as every bathroom and closet and hiding spot that I could think of. I never found anyone. I cleaned up all the mess they made, and I made sure everything seemed normal. Around 45 minutes later, my parents and sister finally came home to me watching TV. I know that this is going to sound really crazy, but I still haven't told them what happened to this day. I was just really afraid that they would never let me stay home alone ever again, and I didn't want that because I really appreciate my privacy. I just want to tell everyone out there to please be safe, because I feel that if I did anything differently other than not calling the cops, 
things could have really ended so much worse for me. I'm a 36-year-old male, and I live in a ground-floor apartment in a seaside town in England with my girlfriend. This incident occurred on a Saturday night. I was home alone because my girlfriend was having an evening out with two friends that she hadn't seen in a couple of months. I'm a night owl at heart, so I like to stay up late on the weekends, and I wanted to wait up anyway just in case her or her friends needed me to drive them home instead of getting a taxi. I'd planned to catch up on some YouTube videos and maybe play a game on my laptop. It was about 10.30 p.m. when I heard the sound of my front door handle moving. I paused the TV and listened, and I heard it again. It sounded like someone was rattling my door handle very quickly. I was confused because I wasn't expecting my girlfriend to be home or call me to pick her up until closer to midnight. So I headed to the door and looked out the peephole. The noise had stopped by the time I reached the door, and when I looked out the peephole, my blood then froze. I saw a man standing further away from my door, facing away from me, so all I could see was the back of his head. It looked like he had his head in his hands. I got a bad feeling in my stomach, and I decided to pretend that I wasn't home figuring it was just some drunk idiot who got the wrong house. I went back to watch TV, but I had kept the noise lower than before. About half an hour passed, and I heard the same noise yet again. I was very on edge, and I immediately shot up and headed for the door. I decided this time that I'd open it, and I didn't ask him what the hell his problem was. I did just that, except when I opened the door... The guy just gave me a bewildered look before backing away. When I opened the door, I said to him, Look man, I don't know who you are, but I saw you trying to open my door earlier. If you don't leave right now, I'm contacting the police. I didn't recognize this man as a neighbor, and his eyes looked tired, with black circles underneath them, and he looked solemn. I stood there watching him as he backed off, before he went to the entryway to our apartment block and just sat there, head in his hands. I went back into my house, but before I did, I then said, Just go home, man, and then shut the door. I wasn't sure if I should call the police because I didn't want to waste their time if the guy simply had the wrong house, which I felt he maybe had since he looked at me so confused. I shot a text to my girlfriend explaining the situation and I told her to make sure she calls me when she wants to come home, because I didn't want her to get a taxi and risk running into the guy outside. I told her to not cut her night short, and I was fine picking her up at any time, and that I'd drive her friends home too if they wanted. I knew she wouldn't be out until 4am because we're both too old to party like that nowadays, but I didn't want her to cut her night short either. I ended up turning the TV off, and just sitting on my phone until my girlfriend called just after midnight to say that she was ready to come home. When I went to go get her, the apartment entryway was now empty, as were the stairs leading to the upper floors from what I could see. I didn't see the man again, although I was very vigilant walking along the street to my car. When my girlfriend and I got home, she told me that she thought that he was probably just a drunk and trying to get into a friend's house, and I agreed. Although, to me, he looked more tired than drunk, but I guess you never really know. I have no idea if he knew someone in our apartment block, or if he really was trying to do something more sinister. I just hope that he never comes back, and I'm really glad that we always kept our front door locked and bolted, because if I had it unlocked that night, he could have waltzed it right in and done God knows what. I'm a 22-year-old female, and I live with my boyfriend. The story took place back in December of 2022. Here's some background information. We didn't really live in the greatest part of town, so there was always shit going on. Our house faces an alleyway, so our backyard meets our neighbors behind us backyard, if that makes sense. Their house faces the main street, 
and our backyards are separated by a chain link fence with a gate. Written in the deed of the house, a gate had to be there so emergency fire personnel can access our whole house if ever needed. The alleyway is so narrow that my boyfriend's pickup truck just makes the turn. From the main street, you can just barely see our tiny little house, and you couldn't see the gate from the main street due to the neighbor's car being parked in the driveway. I was home alone on this night due to my boyfriend being on an emergency call for work. It was around 10 p.m., and I had just door dashed some Applebee's. I know, it was probably a little late for takeout, but I wasn't expecting my boyfriend to be out this late. We have a motion sensor light and camera facing the backyard. Well, just as I'm sitting down to eat and watching TV, I get a notification that someone's in my backyard. Now, I just assume that it's our neighbors outside doing something, but I was wrong. I click the live feed, and I saw a man holding what looks to be a plastic white bag crouched down near the entrance, as well as near the tree along the other side of our yard. I immediately call my boyfriend and I frantically say that someone's in our backyard. He tells me to turn the lights off and keep the dogs quiet. I quickly grab the dogs and hide in the closet until I hear back from my boyfriend. I didn't want to turn off the lights though just in case someone was watching the house and found out someone was home. I was also way too shaken up to call the police, so my boyfriend calls for me. I once again check the live feed from the camera to see if the guy was gone, and he was. I watch back the footage, and he had actually walked through our neighbor's driveway through the gate and then sneakily moved so he didn't set off the camera. When he started to walk towards our bedroom window, that's when the motion light comes on, and the camera then says, Hi, you're now being recorded. Now, our bedroom window is the biggest window on the back of the house. He easily could have stepped on something to get up to the level of the window to see if it was open. Thankfully, if that was the case, we had a solid wood tall dresser right in front of the window, so he wouldn't have been able to get in. My boyfriend calls me back, and he says the police are on their way and to keep an eye out. About 10 minutes go by, and I finally see the police in our backyard trying to find our house. I run out and introduce myself and explain the whole situation. As I'm explaining everything to the cops, my boyfriend pulls up. I give the police the information they need, and I show them the footage. They obviously couldn't do much since the guy wasn't in our backyard anymore, but we just wanted it to be reported and be on record. The officer said that the guy looked like he wanted something in our yard. The things in our yard consisted of a concrete mixer, two bikes, a bike track, and a plastic kiddie pool for the dogs. If the guy had attempted to take any of those things, I wouldn't have even bothered calling the cops. It seemed like he knew the layout of our yard and knew exactly where the gate and camera was located at. I was scared to be home alone for days after this happened, especially at night. The police hung around the neighborhood for a good 20 minutes, then left. Unfortunately, we never heard anything else regarding it. Thankfully, though, we don't live in that house anymore, and I'm really glad.